Hey everyone, my name's Lisa. Welcome back to my channel. You may know me from my previous Emirates tutorials. They were hair and makeup related. However, this one is something totally different. It is something that you've all been requesting from me. You've all been asking so many questions about how to become an Emirates cabin crew. So I've decided that I can't ignore the requests any longer. I am now I'm going to answer the questions that you've given. I have written down all of the questions that you've asked me over the last couple of months on my iPhone, so I'm going to read those out and answer them after I have given you some general information on what you can expect from your Emirates Open Day or your Emirates interview. So firstly, I had a lot of hesitation doing this tutorial for you because I think it goes without saying that there is no set formula that you can have or there's no set things that you can say and do which is going to guarantee you success with Emirates. So I'm happy to share my experience with you with the Emirates recruitment phases. It's just that my experiences may be completely different from somebody else's. So what I say is not exactly how it's going to be for you, but I am more than happy to share my experiences with you. So I didn't really know what to name this tutorial because as I said there's nothing that someone can tell you to say and do which is going to guarantee your success with Emirates. So please think of this more as a guide and some information that I can give you about your Emirates Open Day. If there's a question that you have that I just couldn't cover in this tutorial, please leave me a comment below. If you post it below, the chances are somebody else has the same question and they get to see it and they get to see my, see my response rather than on Facebook. I love getting your private messages on Facebook, however, when they keep coming in continuously, they keep pushing the other new ones that I haven't seen further down and it's hard for me to get to all of them in a timely manner. So just leave a comment below unless you feel that your situation is quite unique and there's something personal that you want to ask me, for sure send me a message about that, but otherwise just leave me comments below. So I'm going to put the link as well in my description bar below for my Facebook page. You can go ahead over there and like my page and you can send me messages on there. And I'll also leave the details for my Instagram, which is at least a single. You can follow me on Instagram also. I think that's all of the formalities out of the way. I'm going to start off by telling you, this is more kind of like a um, conversation with you. I want to start by giving you some information about your open day and the process of applying if you haven't already applied. So, uh, and one more thing before I forget, because I know I will forget. I'm going to put a link below for a Facebook page, which is called, I think it's something like Emirates approval in progress or something like that. So if you've already been to your open day and you are waiting for your golden call, you can um, go ahead and join this Facebook group because you can then get more information from other people who are in the same situation as you. You can ask them questions, you can share your thoughts and doubts and fears and <laughs> everything that is going along with the process of recruitment. So you can go to that Facebook page and become a member and you can um, talk to other people who are in the same situation. Let's get started. Firstly, the application for Emirates. I'm going to now go to my the questions that you've all been asking me over the last couple of months because you've had some really great questions about how it is you even apply. So. First question is, how old do I have to be to join Emirates? Minimum age for Emirates is 21 years of age. Do I need a diploma or a degree for Emirates? The answer to that is no. You need um, proof of finishing or completing secondary school. I think that that's all that you need. If I'm unsuccessful at an open day, when can I reapply? It's kind of a bit tricky. It depends on how far you progressed on your open day. So for example, the open days run in roughly three phases. First phase is kind of like you're submitting all of your documents to the recruiters. You basically just you do the reach test, which I'm going to talk about really soon. It's just kind of like a meet and greet, basically. The second stage is you progressing onto group activities, and the third and final stage is your final interview, which is a one-on-one -on -one interview with your recruiters. So if if you are unsuccessful. If you are let go at the first and second stage, you can reapply within six months. If you are unsuccessful at the final interview stage, the third stage, you cannot apply for another 12 months. Next question. Do we still need to go online to apply before showing up at an open day? 
The answer to this is no. If you are aware of the dates, times and venue for an open date, you can show up, but you will be expected to have all of the documents there that you would need to bring if you had been invited. So um, how you get that information, I'm not really sure. I was invited to my open day, so I don't really know how you would know where it is, but we had people at my open day who weren't formally invited. They just showed up and that's fine as well. Okay, do apply online. Does this guarantee, guarantee an invitation to an open day? Um, I don't know <laughs> because I was invited from my online application, so I'm not sure about that. But there might be something about your situation that they straight away know you're not going to be right for the job. I don't know what that might be, but I guess it doesn't guarantee an invitation, in which case then you can go anyway. I, d I don't know. If I can't make it to the city or country where an open day is being held, what will happen? I had this happen to me. I put my online application in and I didn't expect to hear anything back for a while. I heard back within three days for an invitation to, when you're applying online, you tell them which city you would like to interview at. For me, I wanted to interview in Sydney, Australia, that's where I'm from, and the date that they sent me for Sydney just didn't suit because I had a wedding to go to that weekend, so I wrote back and said, sorry, can you offer me a different day? That day doesn't suit. And they said, okay, you can have Brisbane on these dates or Melbourne on these dates and the Melbourne dates suited me so I drove to Melbourne and interviewed there instead. So if you're in a situation where you just can't make it to the location that they sent you or on that date, just write to them and they will offer you something else. Okay. What kind of questions do they ask at an open day? Alright, so I can't tell you exactly every question that they will ask because I don't know, but I can tell you the questions that I remember that they asked me. And you should treat your interview as any other job application because it's exactly the same. They're going to ask you about your previous work experience, what job role you had, what challenges you had in that job, and you won't get asked any of those questions until your final interview stage. If you're invited to a final interview, that's when they're going to be asking these questions. Up until that stage, it's just group activities, so you don't need to worry too much about, well, you shouldn't worry at all because you should really treat it like any other job interview. A couple of specific questions I remember from my final interview was, can you give us an example of how you were challenged in your previous workplace? So I just gave an example of a situation that was challenging and of course I had I wanted to add that we had a successful outcome of course it's not wise to say how dramatic and how traumatizing an experience was in your previous workplace and that there was no positive outcome it doesn't show that you were able to use your problem-solving skills um, whatever it may be whatever the unique situation was but of course you want to finish off that question with something that was positive. That's one of the questions I specifically remember. You can expect questions that are um, work experience related. They, they, as far as I know, they, they didn't ask me anything personal. Um, how do you feel about moving to Dubai? Nothing like that. I think they already expect that you are aware you will need to move to Dubai for the job. Okay, next question. What are Emirates looking for in a cabin crew? Now, I think it's a very broad subject, it's very hard to answer that quickly, um, but I always advise people in the previous couple of months when you've all been asking me questions, I've always said the same three things that you should do on your open day. Firstly, you should always be polite. Now that should go without saying, but you should always treat the recruiters and your possibly future colleagues with respect and be polite. It's a culture in Dubai which is really necessary. You're going to need to have these assets to be successful with Emirates because being polite is what the job comes down to at the end of the day. So I would suggest treat everyone politely on your open day. The second thing I always say is to smile. You always need to smile. You need to portray the fact that yes, of course you're happy to be at your open day. Yes, maybe you are nervous, but you need to um, look the part right from the get-go, which is why in my previous tutorials, which are hair and makeup related, yes, you should look, you should show up for your open day looking like you are already an Emirates cabin crew. That's what they want to see. The girls who wear their hair flat, straight like this, with a mini skirt and high heels like this, it's it's not wrong. It's just that 
you shouldn't show up looking like this because that's not how you're going to look when you're an Emirates cabin crew. So I would really strongly suggest that for the men, suit and tie, that's how you're going to be dressed as a cabin crew. Ladies, yeah, follow the other tutorials. I'm going to link them below for you. And the third and final thing that I say is to be confident on your open day. Always have inner confidence so that on your open day you can give everyone the impression that yes, I am meant to be here and this job is meant for me. I am meant for the job and I want this job. You want to be um, quietly confident. You don't want to be screaming from the rooftops that you are going to be successful because no one likes that. You want to be quietly confident and that just draws people towards you and it makes people interested in you. So definitely quiet confidence is the third and final thing. So politeness, always smile, quietly confident. That's the three things I say that they are looking for and that you should um, be on your open day. All right, next question. What attitude do the recruiters look for at an open day? A positive attitude. That's all I'm going to say about that. All right, next questions are Dubai related. I think by now you probably realize that if you are successful in the job, you need to move to Dubai. So have any outstation staff apart from ground staff. So all of the people that you see at other airports who are wearing the Emirates uniform, yes, they live there, but everyone else, the pilots, the cabin crew, everyone else lives in Dubai. So you need to be aware of that. Do you have to move to Dubai? Yes, just answered that. Will Emirates provide accommodation in Dubai? Yes, they will. There's crew buildings in almost every suburb of Dubai. It's luck of the draw which one you get. You can't really request, I don't think. You just need to um, be happy with what you get. And I have red hair and freckles. Is that okay? Yes, it's okay. Of course it's okay. We all have things about us which make us unique, so please don't feel concerned that something that you can't even change anyway would be a problem for you. It's not going to be a problem for you. Once you arrive in Dubai, you will see that we have people from all over the world, literally from countries that Emirates don't even fly to yet, so something like this, please don't even feel concerned about. I wear glasses, is that okay? Yes, it's okay, of course it's okay. But there's many crew who wear glasses. I think the rule is maybe that you need to have glasses and an available pair of contact lenses for every flight. I know that, excuse me, I know that if you wear glasses you need to prove on every briefing before every flight that you have both, I think. But I don't wear glasses, so don't quote me on that. But yes, it's okay. Have you ever felt harassed by a passenger on a flight? Um, honestly, no, I haven't, and neither has anyone that I know personally with Emirates, so no. How tall do I have to be? There is not a cut-off height for Emirates. You can be any height as long as you can reach 212 centimeters. So I, my ex-flight mate, she is a shorter girl. She was concerned about the reach test. It's what we call it, the reach test. Um, before the flight, she knew about it. She actually marked on her wall in her house before her open date 212 centimeters on the wall and she would practice it. And I know that sounds silly, but she got in and she is quite short. So if you're concerned about it, just practice it. it need, the reach test is done with no shoes on, but you can stand on your tiptoes, as much as tiptoes as you can, just about to reach 212. So you'll be asked to remove your shoes, but then you can just go for it. So if you're really concerned, seriously have a practice. It's going to help you out. Can you be married when you become cabin crew? Yes, you can. I was married when I, well, I am still married. I don't want that to sound like I'm not. I was married when I applied. My husband and I actually went to the interview together. We were thankfully both successful at our final interviews and here we are. We are now both cabin crew. It's a very unique situation. I've never met another couple in Emirates who were married when they came. Many couples come and meet someone and get married, which is natural, but um, we actually were married at our open day. And if you want to go to your open day with your boyfriend or your girlfriend or your husband or wife, go for it. Of course, I'm not going to say don't do it, but my experience was we actually went. We never said, hey, we're married. We never told, like, we weren't hiding it, but we didn't tell anybody. We, of course, sat next to each other. We talked. There was nothing to hide, but in our resumes were one on top of the other, same surname, single as both of our surnames. So we weren't hiding it, but we never actually were asked, are you married? And then end of the day, we both got in. So success. What jewellery are we allowed to wear? So for the men, one ring on the wedding finger, and I think that that might be it 
by the books. I'm not sure. One ring on the wedding finger. Ladies, can be two rings, can be one on each hand, or it can be two like this, a wedding ring and an engagement ring. I'm wearing a third ring today. This would not be permitted on a flight because it's three. So wedding ring and engagement ring is fine on the same finger. However, otherwise, if it's not wedding ring and engagement ring, one ring on each hand and that's it. No necklaces. Earrings can be little um, diamantes like this or pearls. That's it. That's the only accepted earrings and that is the only accepted jewelry yep that's it okay that is all the questions that I have for you for now so I hope that it was helpful just just remember on your open day that when you're doing your group activities it's I know it feels like a competition because there's maybe 10 or 15 of you sitting around in a circle and it can feel so competitive but you're actually given a task which is going to show how well you work as a team so it's you need to treat it as a group activity where you help one another rather than a competition. So it's hard to not feel like you need to fight to get a word in so that you seem like you can contribute, but you actually need to listen to all of your colleagues and put your two cents worth in when the time is right. It's not a competition. You need to help your colleagues out. They could be the people you're working with on a flight one day, so you want to see they want to see that you work well as a team and that you can help one another out. You can be empathetic to one another. You can um, communicate well with other people, that you have good time management, that you are skilled in communicating with others. If you are interviewing in a country where English is not the first language or if you are from a country where English is not the first language, you will be asked to do an English test. I didn't have to do one, obviously. However, um, friends of mine who were at my open day, who I'm actually now friends with still today, did have to do it, and they said it was really easy. So I don't know. Read into that as much as you want. But apparently it's a very easy English test. So don't worry too much about that. Okay, I feel like I've covered everything, but please leave me a comment below if I didn't. If this um, recruitment talk if this tutorial was helpful for you please give me the thumbs up here on YouTube I would really appreciate it um, the reason I started this was because a friend of mine actually a few friends of mine wanted to apply so that's where I got the idea to do this so if it was helpful give me the thumbs up I would appreciate that now I'm going to leave you but um, you can subscribe to my channel if there's anything else that you want to see just write to me I'll have future tutorials coming up I don't know Emirates related or not Emirates related it depends on what you guys want to see so I'll have other things coming up over the next few weeks but for now I'll say goodbye